Rub up your engines! Well, another Jaguar I-Pace burned down to the ground. They uh, use those uh, electric batteries from Korea. You remember the Chevy Bolt EVs where they had to recall every single one of them and replace all the batteries? Because Jaguar uses the LG batteries just like the Bolt did. Now, the I-Pace is Jaguar's first and only electric vehicle. And if you know anything about English vehicles, the worst part of them are, guess what? They're electrical systems. When I was young, they all used Lucas Electronics. And we mechanics and people the new called Lucas the Prince of Darkness because the electrical systems were often go out at night and you couldn't see if you're driving anything that was English with Lucas Electronics. But they've certainly gone a long way. Now the batteries are coming from Korea, not from England. But they're starting on fire. They're just sitting there, not being recharged or anything. They just spontaneously go up over the course of since they made them, I believe it's five years or so. They sold 50,000 of them. That's only like 10,000 a year. So it's kind of a spit in a bucket for cars. But the fact that, yes, they are indeed burning down. Who knows? Maybe they'll have to replace all the batteries on them. It's the same batteries that they were getting from LG in Korea. So uh, <laughs> stay tuned on this one. You see an electric Jaguar's burning down. Hey, take a picture and send it to me. I'd love to see it. Nick, what's a Toyota? Says Scotty. I know you're not a fan of extended warranties, but I have to brag about mine. I got a 2012 Chevy Cruze with 105,000 miles. I took it in recently, and I got $1,700 of work done, including my air conditioning compressor. I only had to pay my $50 deductible. My warranty through ethos is more than doubly paid for itself with repairs the last four years. It runs out next week, and due to the price of used cars, I would be a fool not to renew it. Thanks for letting me brag. One, you bought something I would have never bought. A Chevy Cruze, one of the worst vehicles ever made, and you're finding it's got big repair bills, right? If the company continues to fix those things, go right ahead. From my experience, though, I had a customer ages ago, we're talking about 30-something years ago, bought an Audi, another mistake car, right? But he did buy an extended warranty. He had like $15,000 worth of warranty work done. And $15,000 was a lot of money back 30-something years ago, right? So he thought, great. So he's going to buy another Audi. And he went to the company to buy an extended warranty for the Audi. You know what they said? Well, we don't do Audis anymore. <laughs> they're losing too much money. You might find you try to renew that thing. They may not want to renew it because they're losing too much money. Those cruises are junk. You, know, you got 105,000 miles. I guarantee you the tranny is going to go out soon. And that's a three to $5,000 job. So I mean, if, hey, they sell you a policy and they'll replace the transmission, go right ahead. But you keep your fingers crossed there because what happens if it goes and they say well we're not covering your transmission what are you going to do sue a warranty company you got a crappy car and the policy did pay i'll give it it did work for you but i've seen so many people that the companies didn't pay for it or they say well that's not covered or they called up the 1-800 number and they get doo -doo -dee -dee. that number does not exist because the warranty company went out of business so you gotta be careful you got lucky i'll say you know it worked for you <laughs> Show up says, is it worth it to straighten the fin of a car AC condenser? And what are indications when I need to replace the condenser? Sure, they make little tools to bend. If their fins are bent, that's the cooling part the air goes through. Go ahead, they make a little tool. You can just bend the fins out, right? As long as it's not damaged and it's not leaking, you don't see any refrigerant hissing out around there. That means the tube doesn't have a hole in it. Now, to replace the condenser, mainly internal problems they have, which you can't see. But of course, if you're in a wreck and it's all bent up and the lines are crushed, you'd have to replace it. If you see it's covered with oil, that means it's leaking and the ACL is coming out and needs replacing. Normally, when they wear out, they just corrode internally. Then they can't dissipate the heat and they clog up. That requires a mechanic. We'd have to put pressure gauges on them and say, yeah, it's clogged up inside. Time for a new condenser, right? Always make sure those condenser fans are working, blowing. If they're not blowing, the AC won't work right. You can't really check the internal stuff yourself without gauges and a lot of equipment, but you can certainly see if it's bent, if it's leaking, and if the fans are working or not on it. JD5 says, I got a Dodge Charger. It has an engine oil cooler, and I had to change it three times. The oil and antifreeze keeps mixing. What do you recommend I do? Well, I'd recommend you not buy a Dodge Charger in the first place, but you've already done that, so. Now, it's just poor quality control. That's how Dodge are you. Keep changing the engine oil cooler, it keeps breaking, and then it keeps leaking in. It just shows the crap that Dodge is making. You know, you're lucky it hasn't destroyed your engine yet, because when you get oil and water mixing, that will destroy the bearings on your engine. Now, if you've had to replace it three times because the engine and the oil mixed, don't be surprised that one day you're going down the road and all of a sudden, bam, a piston knocks a hole in the engine 
engine because the bearings get worn and then the piston breaks right off and knocks a hole in the engine. So don't be surprised that your engine is damaged internally from those going out three times. Now, obviously, Dodge is making crap. My only solution to you would be try to find an aftermarket one from a company that makes them better than what Dodge does. See if Dorman, it's a big aftermarket company, D O R M A N, see if Dorman makes a cooler for it. Use theirs. Those are usually better built than the crap that Dodge makes because they see problems that are out there and then they fix them and then they sell the parts. It's a very good company. They see, hey, these guys make this is crappy, so we'll make it a little bit better, sell it cheaper, and we'll sell a bunch of them. And they've been doing that for decades. I bought Dorman products when I was a kid in the 70s. So, you know, it's, it's a good company and they make much better products a lot of times than the original equipment. Chase Boy says, What is the best radiator cleaner to clean out stop leak from my cooling system that's all gummed up now? Here's the problem. You go back decades ago, there were some great chemical cleaners. There's only one problem. They were all acid based. It takes a good acid to clean all the crud out. They are all illegal in the United States now because they get in the groundwater. People just hose them out. They go down a driveway, down a sewer, get in the groundwater, all that stuff. And so they're illegal. Most of the flushes that you'll buy today at an auto parts store, they're just useless because they don't do hardly anything by law. The government doesn't let them have strong acid cleaners, so a lot of them don't work at all. Oh, they just don't. I mean, you can go to auto parts store, ask them what's best, and if they're honest, they'll tell you, really, you know, well, we got these cleaners, but none of them have that much acid. What you could do yourself, if you want to take the radiator out of the car, take it out, and then get some of that lime away. You know, people use it to clean their bathtubs and sinks and stuff. Fill it up with lime away on the ground. Let it soak for a day. That'll get rid of a lot of crud. Then you can hose it back and forth, the back flush it. One side, put the hose in, it'll come out the other side of the radiator. Then do the other side of the radiator, it'll come out the other side. And you might get it cleaned pretty well there. You don't want to put it in a car while it's running, but take it out, let it soak for a day, and that lime away is actually a pretty good cleaner. It, it can clean that stuff out pretty good, and then put the radiator back in. Odyssey says, what are the best tires for a minivan? I got a 2017 Honda Odyssey, 56,000 miles, that has Michelin Primacy MXV tires. These are original tires, and the treads are just worn. They perform well. Do you have any recommendations? Hey, stick to the Michelins. They're good tires. I got four Michelins on my wife's Lexus. She loves it. I love it. It handles like a dream. It's the best gas mileage you can get out of it. They're, they're great tires. It worked fine. Stick with it. Don't start gambling around with tires because there are so many different tire companies out there, and a lot of them are just rebranded Chinese crap that they put a name on. Always when you buy a tire, and listen to me, in the United States law, they got to say where they're made on the tire somewhere. It might be real tiny on the inside of the tire, but it's got to say it. If it says made in China, run away. Don't buy. It. Take Korean tires, for example, right? Some of the tires made in Korea aren't that great. But there's a Korean tire factory here in Clarksville. They're made in the USA. They're made perfectly fine. And they're great tires. Do a little research. But in your case, you like the tires that were on it. Yeah, they handled well. They lasted 56K. Buy another set of the same tires. That'd be my advice. Hey, says, I got a 2016 Honda CRV. It runs a little bit rich. The long term and short term fuels were minus 5%. I cleaned the math. I used cleaner. What could it be? Now, you cleaned the math sensor, right? You need a guy like me to analyze it with his fancy oscilloscope. I would see is the math sensor working right? Sometimes cleaning fixes them, sometimes not. Could be that simple. It's running rich. That could be the whole problem. If it is, you buy OEM onto it, right? Now, let's say that that is fine. Well, then odds are it's your fuel injectors not spraying correctly. When they don't spray correctly, they'll often run rich because they're supposed to spray little droplets in an upside down cone shape. And if they're kind of dirty, they'll put bigger droplets and the bigger droplets just don't burn correctly and they blop around and then they can run too rich. That's the case, I would say, have your fuel injectors pressure cleaned with a pressure clean machine by a mechanic who knows what he's doing. You could try the gas tank cleaner first. Maybe that'll fix it. Go right ahead. Use that ATS gas cleaner. It'll work perfectly fine. But if that doesn't work, have them physically cleaned by a mechanic with a pressure machine. The ATS guys, they make a pressure cleaning machine. You're not going to buy it. It costs like $5,000. <laughs> you pay a mechanic like me who has one to do it. Japan Car Fan says, do I have a loose timing chain? I got a Toyota 1.8 Valvematic with 40 thousand miles on it. my events and it makes a rattling noise. I doubt if it's your timing chain because it's 40,000 miles and that 
isn't much. And you said that it doesn't matter if I rev it up or not, it makes the same noise, right? Now, if it was a timing chain, you rev it up, it would rattle around more and make different noises at different RPMs. What it probably is, because you only have 40,000 miles, the vacuum pumps on those ZR engines often make that sound. It's kind of a quirk that the Toyota Valvematic systems have. So get a stethoscope and a vacuum pump on that Valvematic system. And if you hear that's what's making a noise, I just live with it if it runs okay. Those things are expensive. I wouldn't even bother because a lot of times you buy a new one and do the same thing. The Alpha make the noise. He has a video that plays the noise, and that's kind of the noise that they make. Because if it's the timing chain, generally they only make it when you start it up, and then once the oil pressure pops up, they'll stop making the noise. If it was the timing chain revving up, it'd make a difference. But with the vacuum pump revving it up, it won't affect the noise. It'll still be exactly the same. It doesn't care if it's idling or revving up. The vacuum pump's going to make the same stupid noise. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.